Welcome. This video covers how to create bar plots in SAS using PROC SGPLOT. Remember that our overall goal here in this module is to summarize data. What we mean by that is, can we describe the distribution of the data? And that kind of differs depending on whether we have categorical variables or numeric variables. If we have categorical variables, what we're trying to describe is the counts or relative frequencies with which each of those categories occur. When we have numeric variables, we're trying to describe the distribution via the shape, center, and spread. We're going to focus on categorical variables in this video, and we're going to look at how to take those contingency tables we did in the previous part and look at them in graphical form instead. Graphic, graphic, graphs are almost always better to use than um, numbers if you can. People like to look at them, they can understand them much more quickly than they can looking at numbers. So remember, um, we had our different numerical summaries that we did before, both across and within subgroups. And then uh, we now are going to be looking at graphical summaries, in particular for this video, bar plots, which will correspond to taking a contingency table, and transforming it into bars. How are we going to create these plots? Well, we're going to use either at PROC SG plot or PROC SG panel. These are very um, broad procedures that can create many, many types of graphs. So we'll use PROC SG plot and SG panel for all of the rest of the graphs that we're going to do, for both categorical and numeric variables. With, uh, when we're using these procs, we're just going to specify which type, of pro which type of plot we want using a particular statement. And they, there's also tons of customizability that you can do in terms of the labels, the coloring, and all of that kind of thing as well. So here's the general syntax for proc SG plot. We start with a proc SG plot statement, of course, and then there are options associated with that, particularly specifying the data. And then there are lots of different statements here that will create a particular type of plot. Usually we choose one of these that we want to plot. You can sometimes overlay more than one, and we'll look at that later on as well. But what we'll focus on are things like hbar to create a horizontal bar plot, for instance. We can customize our output, like we mentioned before, um, using options. And there are tons and tons of options to change the appearance and things like that of our different um, plots that we do. And again, those are going to go, we look at our syntax here, those are going to go after a slash after we specify the variables that we want to plot. One of the main things that we're going to change will be, for instance, things like the fill attributes. So how our um, fill color is done and the transparency of that color as well. And this is a case where we need to think back about how our options work in SAS because this is a little bit complicated. So this fill ATTRS or fill attributes is going to come after the slash on whatever plot you're creating. And then you tell it, um, the style element, but then that style element can have options itself, which you then put in parentheses. So it can be a little bit confusing. So options on this fill attributes go after an equal sign and then in parentheses. For example, if we wanted to change the color and transparency of our bars in our bar plot we're going to make, we can see that we can do fill attributes and then equal, and then we put within parentheses the color and transparency that we want to change. Again, trying to figure out how to read this SAS help documentation is really important because if you now have another option that you want to go figure out how to use, you need to be able to parse that kind of language. So it's pretty important. Um, I should point to these commonly used options. Let me go ahead and open up that. So there's a website that gives you sort of the most commonly used um, options that you're going to change on your plots. So for instance, there's um, line attributes and patterns, fill attributes, which we were just talking about, marker attributes and symbols, text attributes, and things like that. So there's a whole lot of different options that we can change, um, and there's a page dedicated to the common ones that you'll be messing around with. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating some bar plots. Again, bar plots are just going to be representations of the contingency tables that we made previously. We'll use the same um, data set that we did before and basically turn all of those contingency tables into bar plots. We'll be using titanic.csv. We're going to visualize that one-way table with a single bar plot. We can either make that a vertical or a horizontal bar plot. Personally, I like vertical ones a little bit better, but to each their own. Uh, and so here's how we would create a bar plot for the survived variable. We're just going to use the vbar statement and specify the variable survived. And now this takes that one-way contingency table and puts it into bar form. A little bit easier to read and compare these two groups. We can 
take our two-way contingency tables and put them into bar plot form by adding in a group equal option on our hbar or vbar statement. So for instance, if I wanted to look at that two-way contingency table between survived and sex, I can use a group equal sex option, and that will then color the bars based off of that grouping variable. And what's nice is that SAS automatically creates a legend for us so that we don't have to do all that kind of stuff manually. If you don't want these bars to be filled, instead you want them to be a side-by-side -side bar, bar plot instead, um, you can change the, how these groups are displayed by the group display equal option. And so you can do group display equal cluster, and instead of putting them stacked, it's going to put them next to each other. And so this gives us a little bit clearer way to look at the, the, this two-way table. Right? We can see that way more um, women survived than did men in our groups. Now before, when we looked at our three-way contingency tables, we had to break those up into basically conditional two-by-two -two tables and look at them separately. And that wasn't necessarily ideal. It wasn't easy to compare across those different two-way tables. If we want to do the same thing here graphically, we can use PROC SG panel instead to create multiple bar plots. So what SG panel does generically is it panels graphs. So it creates the same graph that you're doing, but at every setting of some other variable. And the general uh, syntax word is very easy. Once you've done your PROC SG plot code, basically you just bring that code in, you change it from PROC SG plot to PROC SG panel, and then you just add a panel by variable. So you add a panel by statement, and then you say which variables you want to panel by. And that is the categorical variable that you're going to create the same plot for every level of. So it's pretty easy to use, actually. For instance, if we wanted to utilize or visualize that three-way table that we did before between embarked, survived, and sex, I'm going to switch to proc SG panel, not SG plot. I'm going to use a panel by statement on embarked. That's going to say for every setting of embarked, make this plot down here. So you can see we have embarked C, embarked Q, embarked S. So for every level of my panel variable, I'm going to create this plot. And so this is the two by two table across those. And this isn't exactly great, right? We have this sort of empty plot over here because there was only three levels of embarked. So if you change the ordering of these, so now if I panel by survived instead, and then put V bar of embarked in sex, I now get something that's much easier to read and much easier to compare. So now we have a very nice visualization of a three way contingency table through this PROC SG panel procedure. That's pretty cool. And don't think you can only panel by one variable. You can just specify multiple variables in your panel by statement. So if I wanted one-way tables across these two variables visualized, I can do that by paneling by sex and embarked and then doing VBAR and survived. So you can see the two conditions given here, and then I get a one-way table at that condition. All right, let's jump into SAS and make some of these on our own, and let's work on customizing some of those attributes that we saw on that previous page. All right, we're into SAS here. We're going to create some bar plots and customize them. We'll use that same uh, online news popularity data set that we created before. So we'll use PROC SG plot to create our plots. It specifies that that is our data set. And uh, we're going to use vertical bar pl plots just like we did before. Uh, and we created a two-way table up here between um, type and is weekend. Let's go ahead and just recreate that in bar plot form. So we'll do type and then slash. We'll do our group being, sorry, SAS is not case sensitive, so it doesn't matter about my inability to type here. Uh, we'll do is weekend. Again, we got to use this weird, um, weird way of specifying these variable names. Uh, and let's just go ahead and run that and see what it looks like to start. Yikes. Here we go. All right, log looked good as it flashed by. So now we have our two-way contingency table um, given as a filled bar plot. All right, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I kind of like the side-by-side -side bar plot a lot better. So I'll do um, group display equal cluster like we did before. And then another option that you can add on bar plots is a data label option. And what that does is that will go ahead and add in labels on the top of the bars to tell you um, how many there are exactly. So you can sort of see over here on the side where they are. This gives you a little bit idea, better idea exactly what those numbers are. Okay, so that's cool. This is really useful information allowing us to understand what types of articles are on the weekend and not on the weekend. 
let's go ahead and customize this a little bit. So we go over here to our commonly used attribute options. We already saw how to change our fill attributes. Let's go ahead and just do that again. We do fill attributes and then equal. The two things that we can change are color and transparency. Let's just change the color of our, or let's just change the transparency of our bars here. So we'll go back to our code. I'm gonna drop it down a line just for readability. I'll do fill ATTRS, and then my options go in parentheses. So I'll do transparency, I can't spell though, transparency uh, equal 0.2. Let's just see what that looks like. Make sure that that works. Okay, yeah, so those bars are not as deeply colored. All right, since we have text on our plots now, we can also change what that text looks like. So if I go back over here, uh, I went into the text attributes part down here, so we can change how our text looks. And this actually gives us an exact example on a bar plot. So it said if you're using data labels on your bar plot, you can add this option for that. And uh, let's just copy that exactly how it is and put it on in there. I'll drop this down the line again, just to make a change. But again, with these op attributes, we're gonna specify the statement, an equal sign, and then put in parentheses the different changes that we want. Um, I don't want light green for my text, so let's go with, uh, let's just keep that as, uh, let's go with uh, brown. And we'll just change some things a little bit. Let's run that, see what happens. All right, looking at the log, everything looked fine. We go over here, we now have brown text um, that's now italicized, I think, and, and just slightly different. So we're able to, to customize this plot however we want. So this is pretty cool. We not only can summarize our information, but we can customize how it looks. Fantastic. We are now able to create our basic bar plots. And what's really nice about SAS is that using the SG plot and SG panel procedure, we don't need to learn an entire new prox syntax in order to create more graphs. We're going to be able to create histograms, box plots, etc., just utilizing the same procedure with different statements. So that's what we'll do next.